Hello, Lobo fans. Welcome into your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm your host, Robert Portnoy, with the men's basketball coach at New Mexico, Richard Patino. Coach Patino, it's great to be with you. Uh, your team coming off a loss at Boise State. It's the first time all season your team has lost back-to-back -back games, and I think that's a testament to the resiliency of the team this season. They've done everything that they could coming back from losses, but that Boise State team is just really big and really strong, aren't they? They're really good, too. I mean, they may be the best team in the league. I mean, obviously, we'll see how the next two games um, turn out, but they could justifiably be the champion. Um, you know, obviously, big, strong, tough, um, really, really, Omar Stanley's probably the most underrated player in the league, in my opinion. Dagenhart's always been a really good player. Uh, Buzo, we just couldn't keep him off the glass. And we missed a lot of shots, honestly. I mean, you know, Jalen House is 0 for 8, and I, I thought all eight were pretty decent looks. Um, he's normally going to hit three or four of them, you know. So um, we played a great first half. Uh, second half, I thought a couple turnovers that were just uh, poorly timed allowed the building to get going. Yeah, regarding House, you said post game you thought that the shots looked pretty good. You've had a chance to watch the tape. You still feel that way. He's had a couple of games back-to-back -back tough shooting nights. One of them, foul trouble was a part of it, but um, he's one of your best. You want him to keep firing. Well, y yes and no. I mean, I think uh, some of the mid-range ones he had I didn't love. He makes the game hard on himself at times, um, you know, where sometimes if you don't have it, just move the ball a little bit more. You can tell sometimes when he's playing, he's trying to make a shot. And uh, he wants to help the team, he cares, uh, but sometimes just let, let it kind of happen through the flow of the game. Um, but it's, it's hard when he's, you know, he's such a volatile player. When he's really, really good, he's obviously great. Uh, we need that from him, you know, because he's a fifth year senior. He's been an all conference player for us for two years and uh, hopefully he can snap out of it. Maybe just presses occasionally. Understandable. Coach also mentioned that sometimes Donovan Dent makes it very easy on himself because of the way that he can get to the rim. Yeah, easy is probably the wrong word. We probably think it looks easy, but it's very, very <laughs> challenging for him. But, yeah, I mean, I think he his game allows him, because he's such a good layup maker, to not rely on jump shots all the time. Um, so we did change up kind of what we were doing offensively when we – you know, you, you never know going into the year what you could have, and I think uh, the two obviously big surprises for us was Donovan made a huge jump, and then obviously JT Toppin, um, just the production level that he's had, has kind of had us change a little bit. We have the ball in Donovan's hand a lot more um, than maybe last year. You know, last year he wasn't a high, high minute guy, you know, a game guy, but certainly he's been very, very productive. Coach mentioned Shibuzo Abo of Boise State, a player that the Lobos actually liked and recruited. Um, that's what you've been talking about with regard to size on the wing, isn't it? I mean, there's a, a player that goes for a double-double that can also shoot the three. Um, he's a good-looking player. He is, yeah. And, you know, we just uh, we don't have that right now. I think we're wrestling with kind of what do we do right there. And, you know, like True was really good last game, but it was the same guy who was inconsistent versus Air Force. And that's what you're going to get from a freshman. Um, I think Baker – has it a little bit, but you know when the shot's not falling, we're we're in a little bit of a bind there as well. So it's it's there's no perfect solution to it, you know. And I got people yelling at me to play Quentin and Braden, but they just haven't played a lot. It's not quite their time yet. I, I really think they're going to be good players, um, you know. But you just got to our guys that are getting those opportunities. I think they just got to they got to stay confident, keep believing in themselves, and they'll perform. Coach mentioned Stanley, the big for Boise State. As you look at the season that your postman, Nelly Jr. Joseph, has had the transfer from Iona, uh, how do you evaluate his play? Yeah, I think he's been good. I do. I mean, I, th I think he's getting better as of late. You know, we certainly talked about him being stuck uh, at home for the whole summer. That didn't help. Um, you know, he, we threw him right into the fire. I remember that St. Mary's game saying, I don't think he knows a play we're running. Um, I think He's had a good, solid first year. Uh, he'll have a great offseason, be around this year, and, and then he'll be even better next year. We're going to spend a segment on this show talking about JT Toppin, the freshman that you mentioned, Coach, and let's get this news out right now. Mountain West Freshman of the Week, that's nine times. You mentioned Tyson Dagenhart. He ties Dagenhart's Mountain West record. He's special. He's going to be special. Um, you know, I think he's had such a good freshman year if he uses it as great motivation in the offseason to work his butt off. You know, he still has freshman habits that all freshmen have, and I think it's just a maturity level of time. He's not necessarily immature, but more of a 
business like every single day I'm going to max out, uh, get the most out of this. The sky could be the limit, you know. And he's uh, he's done some terrific things. We kind of look at how are we different last year to this year, and certainly he's added a great dimension to our roster. Okay, we take our first time out on this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show. We break down tape of the Lobos in Boise State next with the coach. Welcome back into your Lobo Coaches Show with the men's basketball coach at New Mexico, Richard Patino. I'm Robert Portnoy. It's time to break down tape of the Lobos' trip to Boise State to take on the conference-leading Broncos. And it, it was a battle in the first half in particular, Coach. Yeah, I mean, we were ready to go. You know, we run that play often. Donovan misses the uh, layup that he's normally been making. Um, and JT cleans it up. This is something where we just, we got to stop doing that. You know, Jalen knows to go over the screen, not under. I thought it was a really good pass by Mash to a knockdown three. You talked about JT Toppin developing his game even further. When he can knock down those threes consistently, oh my goodness, coach. Yeah, and he's obviously been really, really good in the low post. Did a good job of getting him the ball. Did a good job right here of, of, of the ball screen. Max Rice helped kick out to Mash. That's keeping the game simple right there. Mash got his shooting going early in this game. It felt like for a moment it might be a game where he would just go off. The pocket pass was terrific for you guys here in the first half. Yeah, I mean, we shared the ball well. That was a really good pass by Mash right there and a good dive. Um, we just didn't sustain it for 40 minutes like they did. Here's Stanley. You talked about him down on the block. It seemed like every single possession started with a post touch for them. Yeah, and we, we, we were changing up our post defensive coverages and part of the issue was we were getting beat on offensive rebounds out of scrambles, um, you know, but Jalen House has to have more of a presence on the dig right there. This happened a couple of times. Dagenhart likes to leak out, and uh, they were able to make three-quarter court passes to him. Yeah, our guards got to get back. You know, our guards are staring, hoping the result the ball goes in. They got to get back. This one ended the clock. Did a couple of times in the clock. Like, JT needs to know you got to make him drive. You got to make him put the ball on the ground there. There's another pocket pass. Um, we've seen Dent do it. We've seen House do it. We've seen Mash do it. A really effective play for you off the ball screen. Yeah, good keep right there, good finish at the rim. And that's what we talked about in our open, the ability for Donovan Dent to finish at the rim. Uh, this is a great offensive rebound and a kick out, and, and then you get the lob here from Baker. Yeah, nice pass by, by Baker right there. I mean, it all started with the effort on the offensive rebound. Buzo getting out on the break. You know, when you're on, on the road, you gotta do your very, very best to kind of keep the building out of it. We didn't do a good job in the second half. Another good finish by Donovan. He was a little bit hobbled by a little uh, quad contusion, but made some good plays. I feel like we've seen him do that more here in the latter half of the season, refuse that screen and take it, you know, the ball side. And it's, it's actually worked really well. It's worked really well. Mash does a great job of reading the help right there. Really nice pass. We get screwed up. I think Jalen House fell down this possession. He falls down a lot, and that, that puts us in a huge disadvantage in transition defense going five on four. Drew Washington, you mentioned it, um, maybe not his best game against Air Force. Short memory coach, you, you've talked about these young guys, they're so resilient. He played great in this game. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him done that at the end of the Air Force game. Yes. Shoot it with confidence, but that's what a freshman does. You know, I mean, I really like his game. I think he's going to be a good player. Um, he's tough. He, he believes. You know, and he's got a high level of confidence. And he's not one-dimensional. We saw him take it inside there. He gives it up and gets it back and makes a corner three. Yeah, JT's just got to play better defense right there. That's one-on-one. -on -one. You got to play better defense. And here's True showing his ability in the mid-range, a beautiful little floater in the lane. My partner Hunter Green says that that shot from straight on right in front of the rim about 10 feet is a very difficult shot. Yeah, I don't know if it was 10 feet away. It might have been about six feet away, but it was a good drive. Um, you know, this is a really good drive and seal to a dump down for JT. JT just terrific again. A, another Mountain West Freshman of the Week. Um, we've talked about our coach. Just one of the best bigs in the conference. Not just freshmen, but best bigs. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's going to get better and better for sure. Um, another good finish at the rim by Donovan. When Boise took control of the game here and, and got its double-digit lead in the second half, what did you see? We had cut it to five several times. They just made plays, you know. I mean, they're, they're a championship team, and they just, every time we made a little mistake, they seemed to make a play. They have a pair of bigs in this game go for double-doubles in Stanley and Abo, and I guess calling Abo a big, he is. He's a big player. But he's a wing player. You can see the statistics here. Terrific game for JT Top in 21 and 8. Mashburn very efficient, 19 points. And Dent, 11 points, 
six assists. Um, he was doing his thing off the ball screens. He was, yeah. We, what, what's struggled for us has been the defensive side of it. You know, we were so very good early. And, uh, you know, the offense for the most part has been somewhat fine, but the defense has certainly tailed off. There's been a difference in the ability of the Lobos to sort of create havoc and, and speed up teams and get them out of their rhythm and turn them over. Has something changed there? Yeah, people are not going at Jalen House anymore. You know, they're, it's like in football. They're not throwing at a cornerback that they're concerned with. You know, they're, they're, they're staying away from that. And um, I've said all along, you're not going to be able to turn teams over 15, you know, 15 steals every single game. You're going to have to be able to get a stop when you need to. And uh, we have we've done it. It's not like we, you know, I mean, we are 21-8. and eight. You know, we are 9-7 and seven in the league. It's not like we're having some disastrous season, but we just got to find a way to shore that all up by Wednesday. Another thing the coaches talked about is getting the bigs more involved down on the post. And I thought both Nelly and JT were impactful down there in this game. Yeah, and I, I think Mash has done a good job of throwing it in there. Uh, Donovan's always been pretty good. I, I think, you know, besides Jalen obviously missing shots, I, I don't have big issues with our offense versus Boise. You know, when you go on the road and scored 79 points versus a terrific defensive team, I thought we did a lot of good things, uh, but it again, it's it was the turnovers that led to baskets was really, really hard for us. Okay, we come back on the other side of the timeout. We're going to feature two Lobos, the outstanding freshman, JT Toppin, and a, a returning sophomore, Braden Applehans, next in this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show. Welcome back into your Lobo Coaches Show with the men's basketball coach at New Mexico, Richard Patino. I'm Robert Portnoy. And Coach, let's start this segment uh, with your returning second-year player, Braden Applehans, actually a redshirt freshman. Um, he made an announcement last week via Twitter about his struggles with depression, and um, he, he did it to, to bring light to something um, that I think is, is kind of in the shadows a lot and, and maybe help people uh, moving forward, uh, letting them know that, that they can um, get better and that there is help out there. Um, you were really proud of him, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, I think... Um just the way he, the, the reason why he did it is what I'm most proud of. He didn't do it for attention. Um, he did it because he solely wants to help. And I've talked many a times about the negatives of social media. And I think the negatives far outweigh the positives times 1,000. Uh, there's so much vitriol, negativity, anger, um, causes of a lot of mental health issues that we all deal with, especially with our children and so on. So to see Braden have the courage to step up there on that platform and use some good from it, um, and then just the outpouring of support was great. So um, the resources are, are getting better here for sure. They can always improve uh, because although there's a lot of frustrating things that young people do in today's world, they're going through a lot. They really are in this you know, camera phone, social media world, all those things, and it can be challenging. And, uh, we got to erase that stigma of thinking that you're weak if you ask for help. In uh, Braden's case, I think he certainly will help continue to push that narrative in the right direction. It's something that uh, the entire team, coaching staff, players, everyone, they've been there for him throughout. Uh, how about the way that everyone has reacted uh, as this sort of unfolded over the course of the season? Yeah, I, I don't know the the social media part. That's a different world I try not to live in, uh, especially during the season. But I know on a day-to-day -day basis, this has been something going on for a while. Uh, it's been heartbreaking to see. Um, as a coach, you just try to be there for him and uh, get him the proper resources and the professional help that anyone needs. And it's not just Braden. You know, I mean, it's, several guys on our team have const you've come to us. And it happens more and more as – the world evolves, and I'm sure there's many more student athletes that are uh, dealing with it. I'm very proud of our players, the way they handled it. Uh, I don't know if I would be as mature about it at their age. Um, you know, and they were all very, very supportive. So although I hate the fact that Braden went through all this, I'm proud of the fact or, or, or happy with the fact that he feels we're supporting him. Uh, because that's all you want really in the end. And I know there was one big moment where um, you took the step of bringing his mom to Albuquerque, and, and he has said that she has been amazing in his her support of him, and that was a key moment for him in his recovery. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when you have kids away from home, um, a lot of pressure on them, basketball, academics, socially, and so on, 
sometimes you just got to get be around you know the people you know unconditionally love you you know because um that can be a lonely world when you're in this profession and uh we we talk all the time about all the bad things about the NCAA. We could probably do a couple shows about that. Uh, but the good is that some of the rules have changed to where you can provide those resources. So to be able to get his mom here, uh, I think it really helped kind of on that road to recovery, so to speak. Braden called it an invisible injury, and there is help out there for depression. And Braden showed his strength by letting people know that he was able to get it, and he is on the mend. Okay, Coach, JT Toppin, uh, an incredible freshman, Let's start at this point. You bring him to Albuquerque. What did you think you had? Yeah, we liked him for sure when we signed him. We thought we had a hidden gem. He wasn't highly, highly recruited by any means. Um, then he stepped on campus and we thought we had a little bit more than maybe we thought when we first got him. And uh, just the production level. Um, you know, when you first brought him here, what do you play him at? Do you play him at the back of five? Do you play him at the back of four? And he just, he kept chugging along every single day. and. Um, you know, he's been, what, nine-time player, the freshman of the week, which has been impressive. And I, I just think what excites me, and who knows what the future holds with any of these players, but, um, you know, as if he does stay and continue to get better, uh, he could be a player of the year type player. Yeah, Coach mentioned the nine-time freshman of the week that ties a Mountain West record with one of the best players in the league, Tyson Dagenhart of Boise State, who did it nine times as a freshman. How about some of these numbers for JT Toppin, coach. Um, he has UNM freshman records for double doubles, nine, shattering a mark set by Kenny Thomas. Kenny Thomas was also the freshman record holder for blocks in a single season, 56 for JT Toppin. He's passed a legend in two really big categories. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been available, knock on wood. There hasn't been a lot of injuries, which is very, very important. He's been reliable um, and and like we said before he produces you know and he fills up the stat sheet I still remember that San Diego State game how well he played and uh, he's been reliable and, and you know the way he plays allows him to be consistent because he's going to rebound he's going to block shots and he's going to attack the rim. JT also top 15 single season in field goal percentage offensive rebounds and blocks all time at the University of New Mexico. We pause, we come back, we look at the seniors who will be celebrated on senior night this week in the pit. We're back to wrap up this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show with the men's basketball coach at New Mexico, Richard Patino. I'm Robert Portnoy and Coach Patino, senior night this week against Fresno State, four outstanding seniors. Let's start with the two players that you'll just have for one year, Jamal Baker Jr. and Isaac Mishila and their contributions to the program. Well, both leadership uh, phenomenal you know Jamal Baker certainly has played more and um, I just appreciate both their attitudes so much you know Jamal has had a history of some injuries uh, we kind of battled those a little bit he, he feels good now he's doing well um, Isaac Mushila just you hate the fact when you bring a kid here for one year and he doesn't play a lot um, you know that does it, it stings a little bit, but to his credit, he's had an amazing attitude. Um, he's never been an issue in the locker room, and he's a good player. You know, he's just playing behind JT Toppin and guys who have just produced, um, but both high, high character kids. I hope they've loved it, and I hope they're going to do great things. When Coach rebooted the Lobo program, two guards, Jamal Mashburn Jr. and Jalen House, were the stalwarts from the beginning. Three years with Coach. Let's start with Mash a guy that you brought with you from Minnesota. Yeah, a level of uh, determination every single day. You know, works his butt off, uh, has a great belief in himself, uh, not in a false uh, bravado type of way, but puts in the work. You know, he just puts in the work and he's shown great leadership. Obviously, uh, both of them have had a little bit of down years, not horrible by what some people may think, but they raised the bar in the first two years being all conference players. Uh, sitting here, we, we are not sitting here for a potential NCAA tournament berth uh, in year three of one of the biggest rebuilds in the country if it isn't for those two guys. Mashburn Jr., the Mountain West scoring champion last year, and uh, he will finish in the top 10 in career points, field goals, and free throw percentage. Jalen House, the number two man in the history of the Lobo program for career steals. He's been something else, Coach. Yeah, he's been um, such a entertaining player to watch um, you know steals 
big shots, plays so very, very hard, um, pours his heart and soul into it, not afraid to put himself out there on the court. You know, so um, another guy where he can change the game with his defense and uh, his effort, his care factor um, is so great. You know, he can be maddening at times, so can Mash, uh, but I can promise you we're going to miss both of them. How's can change the game with his defense? What about his offense too, Coach? He's going to finish in the top 20 in points, assists, three-point field goals made, and free throw percentage. He's electric at both ends of the court. He is, yeah, he is uh, for sure. And, you know, he's playing a little bit out of position this year, but I think that has to do with the emergence of Donovan Den as a true point guard. Um, but he, he's 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 gone into place to San Diego State. They haven't lost there in two years. Went in there, lit them up, played great. Um, you know, he gets 40 at Air Force. Um, you know, so he, he's he'll, he'll play basketball for a while after this. And, uh, you know, I think he's... He's been a great Lobo for three years. About a half minute left. Both those players, Mashburn and House, have sacrificed just a little bit to make room for a super sophomore in Dent. And they've done it. And I think that's a testament to them. Yeah, high character kids. You know, um, sometimes you watch them play. They may take a bad shot every now and then, but they've never had an issue on the court, off the court. They've represented themselves the right way. Uh, and I'm very proud to have been their coach for three years. We look forward to senior night and then the finale in Logan against Utah State. Absolutely. For Lobo Head Coach Richard Pitino, Steve Kirkland, and Chase Critchison, I'm Robert Portman. So long, everybody, and go Lobos.